Well, hello, beautiful people. You know, it's been about a year since when Luminar Neo first came out. And I kind of wanted to do an overview of how it's going with Luminar Neo one year later. A couple things to consider though, I'm not going to bring up the timeline of when things were released. As you all know, there is still a war going on in Ukraine. So in regards to when updates happened and when things came out, I'm just going to put that to the side. And also I'm not going to cover every little thing in Neo, just some major points and features. The first thing I want to talk about is layers. Those of you that came from Luminar AI missed layers from Luminar 4. So the anticipation of having layers in Luminar Neo was pretty high. Upon the initial release though, it was a bit underwhelming because although they did add layers to Luminar Neo, it was missing some key things. And there were also some minor bugs that ended up being taken care of afterwards. But even as of today, we don't have a complete layers feature. It's still missing the ability to merge layers or flatten them. In general, the layers feature is pretty simple and it's pretty basic. Probably the most strongest and useful features for me was Relight AI and the portrait tools. Relight has become one of my favorite tools in Luminar Neo because I love backlighting my subjects when I'm doing photography. Now where Relight helps is that if you don't have studio strobes to fight that sun off or even an external flash, Relight can do that for you artificially, as long as you're not too underexposed. And Relight AI also is very useful for street photography, landscape photos, pretty much anything where you can manipulate the shadows, the lighting, the foreground and the background. It's such a very useful and powerful tool. Now being mainly a portrait photographer, I really love the portrait tools. As simple as they are, they perform very well. The face AI and skin AI is probably the best that I've seen. The eye feature in face AI has really saved a lot of my photos that needed that eye enhancement. Maybe I didn't get enough catch light in the eyes. And in Neo, they have something that's called the iris flare where I can crank that up and give it sort of a fictitious catch light. Along with the eye enhancer, it just makes the eyes very crisp and clear. And also since I've been going back to my roots lately, getting more into digital imaging, the eye feature really helps with those AI images. Skin AI is simple as it is with that one or two sliders. You can get really good skin results along with using the masking tool. And even compared to On One Photo Raw, for example, although there are more options available, more tools to use, I find with Neo, I can get better skin results a lot quicker. I'm a simple guy that loves efficiency. Relight AI and the portrait tools are as simple as it can get and they're very effective. Another couple additions to Luminar Neo was the ability to remove power lines and dust spots. My initial thoughts about the power line removal for me wasn't very useful because where I shoot and what I do, I don't really run into that issue. But if you're a street photographer and if you're in a busy area with lots of power lines and things like that, I can definitely see the use cases for it. Now, what I found about the power line removal, it works best with a sky in the background. Usually it'll do 80 to 90% of the work with very minimal cleanup. Where it struggles though is that if you have buildings in the background or if the exposure is more on the low side, it tends to miss some spots and you end up doing it manually anyway. So in that case, it doesn't perform too well. Removing dust spots at a click of a button though, super handy. I typically try to keep my sensor as clean as possible, as well as the glass on my lens, but I've been in situations where I've had gigs lined up and I've had no time to clean it, and you're just throwing your gear in the bag and things get super dirty, I, I get it. And for the most part, the dust spots removal works very well. Whenever I've needed it, it's come in clutch. However, that's the thing. I don't really need it too often. 
Now on to Mask AI. Now if we take Adobe out of the picture for a second, Skylum was probably one of the first companies to really mainstream the Mask AI concept. And in general, for the most part, it works pretty well. Where I found it useful, again, was for masking out groups of people, individual people. And it does really good with landscapes, like if you wanted to select just the sky or just the water. It does a pretty decent job of separating the subject from the background or isolating that area. But one of the biggest gripes I have with Mask AI is that it doesn't recognize animals or insects and it doesn't recognize objects. It also can be hit or miss depending on the picture that you have. When it first came out, I said, okay, this isn't bad for the first release. For the most part, it works pretty well. But here we are a year later, and there hasn't really been any improvements in terms of the accuracy or the ability to select animals, insects, or objects. Which kind of segues me to portrait background remover and background removal AI. Since these two features use a masking technique, they both suffer from the same things for obvious reasons. Let's start with portrait background AI. For the most part, it works very well. I have very little issues with it, except for when it comes to very complex backgrounds or people with very curly hair or big hair, like 80s hair. <laughs> and the refinement tools I find, although they work okay, it just seems really clunky and old school. To be known as an AI program, to have to painstakingly and manually, you know, delete areas, mask areas, it just doesn't go hand in hand with what you're trying to promote. Now, when it comes to background removal AI, it does recognize objects and animals now, but mask AI doesn't. And it has the same problems as portrait background removal with complex hair and backgrounds. Now, one of the reasons that we were given from Skylim was that they were both developed very differently. Now, I'm not a developer. I don't know how difficult it is to do things like that. But in terms of a design aspect, wouldn't you think of just creating one background remover, not a portrait background remover, and then a separate background remover? And to get background removal AI, it's part of an extension. We'll talk about extensions later, but in short, I really don't think that was the best move. Skylim should have just developed background removal AI with the portrait background features included and called it a day. I don't think anyone would have complained, but to split it up into an extension, that doesn't fly with me, to be honest. And if background removal AI can now recognize animals and objects, why can't mask AI recognize animals and objects? Now on to extensions. As you know, there were seven extensions released in 2022. HDR Merge, Noiseless AI, Background Removal, Focus Stacking, Upscale AI, Super Sharp AI, and Magic Lights. Out of all the extensions, you already know how I feel about background removal AI. That shouldn't even be there. HDR Merge and Focus Stacking, I think, are their strongest extensions that I would personally find some use out of. Noiseless AI, Upscale AI, Super Sharp AI, they're great additions. I would say they're good enough, but they fall flat in compared to the competition. I'd like to see some improvements from these three extensions in terms of the quality of the results. Noiseless AI is probably the strongest out of the three, and it was optimized a few months ago, so it works fairly well. Upscale AI and Super Sharp AI, I find, need still more refinement, more optimization, and with the recent Face Enhancer AI, it could potentially be a powerful trio. It's just not there yet. As for Magic Light AI, it's a cool feature. Personally, it's not really useful for me. I wish that Luminar Neal instead had some effects built in where magic light should be. 
So out of the seven extensions, I really feel like Magic Light Background Removal AI shouldn't even be there. I would have rather had something for panoramics and another extension that would be more useful. In terms of value and price to performance, this is where they really fell short. If you were to buy the extension pack outright in Canada, it's about $360. So I think that's like 250 US or something like that. If I was a new buyer buying Luminar Neo at regular price in Canada, it would be roughly about $150 without any specials or sales. And I would buy three extensions like HDR Merge, Focus Stacking, and I don't know, Noiseless AI. That would cost me over $300, but I've bought it outright and I own it. On the other side of the fence, you have On One Photo Raw 2023. And for around the same price as Luminar Neo, that includes the extensions and you're able to use it within Photoshop and Lightroom or Affinity Photo. That's more than 50% cheaper than Luminar Neo. If Skylim wanted to compete with these extensions, they should have followed a similar path. And lastly, overall, I feel like all the extensions need some sort of refinement or improvement. The next thing I want to talk about is the overall optimization of Luminar Neo, which is a very touchy subject for a lot of you. I've been fortunate that I haven't had any major performance issues, but I am aware of all the issues that many of you have had. It's no surprise that a photo editing program would rely a lot on the CPU and memory of your system. And it was said that Luminar Neo would eventually have GPU utilization as well to offload some of those tasks to make it run smoother and more efficiently. One year later, we're still waiting for that. The only GPU utilization that was done was for noiseless AI. And I might say it improved it a lot. I would say almost 50% better performance in some cases. For me, it was more like 30% improvement. For example, my initial tests using noiseless AI, it would take 20 to 25 seconds for one image to get rid of the noise and do its thing. After the GPU utilization, it only took six to 10 seconds per image. Now, if they can use the GPU for other tasks and cut down those non-efficient tasks and improving them 30% to 50%, man, that would make Neo just prime. But I understand that not everybody could have the latest and greatest computer. So the spec requirements on paper look pretty reasonable. But when push comes to shove, if you have an older generation computer, I'd say four to five years old or more, Neo probably wouldn't work too well for you. Now, I don't have the most top of the line computer. I have a Ryzen 5800X, 32 gigabytes of RAM with a 3060 Ti as my graphics card. And Neo runs fine on it. It rarely crashes unless, you know, I purposely try to break it. But I built my PC to spec because of programs like Neo. I do video editing, obviously. I have control over the system that I have. Not everybody has that luxury. Next, I want to talk about layers, clone and stamp, dodge and burn, and the histogram. And this is more about the initial release. Layers, as mentioned before, although it was an addition, wasn't really complete upon the initial release, and we're still waiting to be able to merge layers. Clone and stamp didn't come until the end of the updates. And to me, that's a standard necessary tool for editors. I could say the same thing about dodge and burn and the histogram needing to be there upon the release of the program. These are standard tools that there's really no excuse that they weren't there in the first place. And I know I said I wouldn't mention timeline, but the amount of time it took to get clone and stamp, it was one of the last updates to get. And in my opinion, it should have been on the first or second update. Not to mention undo redo. That took forever to get. And currently it only works with brushes. Is there a need to use it elsewhere? I, I don't know at this moment. Like clone and stamp, 
undo redo is a standard action that all editors do on a daily basis. Could you imagine a new photo editor who wants to make this a career, chooses Luminar Neo to start off as a semi-professional, and he can't clone and stamp or undo redo. He's going to ditch it and get something else. In conclusion, if I were to be totally honest and transparent for what I do, Luminar Neo can do most of the tasks that I need. I very seldomly need to go into another photo editor to do the editing work that I need to do. But when it comes to digital editing, because I've gone back and focused a bit more on digital art, I'm using Neo more as a plugin out of say Affinity Photo or Photoshop. And as much as I griped about the optimization of Neo, it actually runs very well on my computer. It very rarely crashes on me unless I purposely do things really quickly and try to break it. The ease of use and the simplicity is probably the most drawing thing I love about Neo. I've used it so much where if I have a photo shoot outdoors and I'm familiar with the look that I want, I can either use a preset that I've created, or even if I were to do it manually, I can edit a photo fairly quickly, do a batch process edit, and I'm done. In terms of value and cost, the core program to me is well worth it, if your system can handle it. But it's when you start looking at the cost of the extensions and that starts to add up. If you buy it outright, I still think there's a lot of value there. But again, compared to the competition, it's a bit on the pricey side. So the big question is, would I still recommend Luminar Neo? I would say yes. However, I would split that into two main categories. For the pro or semi-pro, I would buy the core program for Luminar Neo and use it as a glorified plugin. Because if you're using Affinity Photo or Photoshop, you don't have a need for HDR merge, focus stacking, or things like that because it's already included. For the hobbyist or serious enthusiast, yes, I would recommend it to you as well but I wouldn't necessarily recommend all the extensions. I would only buy two or three extensions based on the work you do. Although a little bit pricey, I think the value is still there if you were to buy it outright. But as a main photo editor, at least in my opinion, it does everything I need it to do. With that being said, these are my perspectives and my opinions. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you guys think a year later about Luminar Neo. I know I've been focusing a lot on AI stuff and Neo is still an AI program, but I promise you there's a lot of Luminar Neo content coming up that I still gotta edit. I've got a whole backlog on it. But until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.